I mean, you had this low growth environment and corporations looking to do acquisitions to create growth, and you have the crowding out effect of all this other capital looking to do acquisitions, it's going to be a pretty frothy market. And by the way, don't forget about SPACs. And SPACs are yeah. like the, uh, that's like the, 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 the kerosene on the fire because they have to put money to work within a very short prescribed timetable, and they are. Mark, how, how, how does a rational investor deal with this? You've told me two things, one of which is the mark is frothy and this is going to end at some point. How does a rational investor kind of work out a portfolio that, that allows you to take advantage of the upside but gives you some protection at least on the downside. And it's maybe, maybe actually that latter bit that I'm really struggling with at the moment. I think getting exposure to the upside is relatively straightforward, but it's, but it's how do I protect myself? How do I provide a hedge in my portfolio that is gonna provide me with some downside protection? That's a great question. And I think that's the $64 question what everyone should be thinking about. And personally, I think about it daily. Uh, first and foremost, you gotta invest in the long term. Uh, the short-term get-rich-quick uh, schemes, you know what happens. We all know how those end. So you got to be comfortable that you're buying companies that have, uh, that have fundamental long-term uh, opportunities and that you're investing for the long-term. There will be corrections along the way, but when you look back in three and five years, you'll have an appropriate rate of return. That's, and that's what you're looking for, an appropriate rate of return. Uh, and as you think about asset class, yeah, there should be diversification. I mean, I could just give you personally, you know, while I'm still heavily invested in, uh, in U.S. equities, I've also moved from some foreign currency exposure, also some other asset classes. I know there's been a housing boom, and so you want to be careful in getting to those markets, but having hard assets is not a bad place to be as well. But it's diversification and it's long-term investing in my humble view. Uh, so, Mark, two words for you. SPACs, Bitcoin. Your thoughts? <laughs> uh, Bitcoin is clearly uh, the em embodiment of this, uh, uh, this, this, ca this uh, cash hoard that's out there, uh, and it's looking for places to play. But it also is the embodiment of what we see in frothy markets. Someone picks a number of, of situations and those become the darlings to trade. I told this story to a friend of mine a couple of days ago, 1986, I was going up in my elevator in Manhattan and the man operating the elevator said to me, what do you think of this stock called ZZ Best? Now we all know that was a fraud and we all know that was 1986. I came upstairs and said to my wife, this is the end of the market. So this type of frothiness is, is scary. Now, yes, are there reasons why Bitcoin might have a place in the marketplace and then when you, when you, in, in the currency marketplace, when you hear about what Elon Musk is doing uh, at Tesla, does that make a difference? Yes, but it doesn't necessarily suggest the value should be where the value is.